Do you often get puzzled over this term root file system? When you move on to the embedded Linux system, understanding this root file system becomes very important. But the problem is more you Google around, more you try to understand, the more puzzling it becomes. So I'm here to help you out with this term root file system, where I would be explaining you the root file system in a very simple terminology. Hi everyone, I'm Pradeep Tewani. I'm a trainer and consultant. To know more about me, refer the description of this video. And I also have the community, the WhatsApp community of the like-minded people who want to learn the embedded Linux, you can join me over there as well. The link for the same is available in the description of this video. Now let's right away jump onto root file system. All right, to understand root file system, one thing which we need to think over is, we have to think from the normal user perspective, like being a normal user working on the, working on a system, what is the basic minimal stuff do you need? What do I mean to say is like when you want to work, the basic thing we will be needing is the commands that I will need a terminal and on the terminal, I should be execute some commands such, uh, such as the ls command, cp command, cd command and all those kind of things. Now, all these commands which you have, are they reside in folder called bin. So bin means binary. That is where your executables, the various commands sit. So the first thing which your root file system should have is the bin to provide the command to the user so that user can work on the system. Now, as you know, there are two categories of commands. One commands are the one which are being executed by the normal user and you need other categories of command which basically correspond to the super user. Like you want to install the module, you want to remove the module. So those all things require the privileges. So all the commands which require the privileges they reside under sbin. So that's what sbin contains. All the commands which are required, which require the privileges are being placed under sbin. Now sbin contains one more important stuff which is very important for from the booting perspective. This is the one which allows as allows the kernel to transition to the user space. So as you know, when your boot comes up, the first thing which you get is the bootloader. Then from the bootloader, you get into the kernel and from the kernel, you get onto the user space. Now, in order to transition from the kernel to the user space, you need the first user space process called init. So, has been typically contains the first user space process called init. Now init might be located at other places as well. It might be in the ETC or any other folder as well. But typically this is the standard location for init. Well, so now we understood that we need the executables. We need the command so that users can work on it. Further to this, what we will require is as you know, typically all the applications we combine, these commands are also nothing but an application. LS commands, CP commands, what are they? They are just the user space applications. And typically all these user space applications, we link them with the shared libraries. So obviously when we want to run these things, be it, be it init or LS or CP command, we need to dynamically link the libraries because we use the shared object over there. So the next important folder which you need to have in your root file system is something like lib. So lib is another important thing which contains all the libraries such as libc library, pthread library and all will be the part of this and these are required for the execution of the commands and any application which you might be executing. Now Next, what you need is, of course, uh, you need to add the user, you need to remove the user, you need the permissions for the user, and you need to basically configure some services. So what I'm talking of is something which is important for the admin guys, okay? So that is where we need something called ETC. ETC is something like a admin's 
home here you will find slash etc password slash etc shadow then you will be having slash etc uh, if it is a uh, in it, uh, if it is a sysv in it, then you will have c slash etc in it the various services which you might to, need to run. So all those things which are required for the admin are located over here. So the another important thing which we have got is the etc. Apart from this, as you know, we have the concept in Linux which is something like uh, each and everything is a file. Now, in order to support that philosophy, what you require is typically one folder by name, Dave, under which you will be having all the device files. Apart from this, what you might be needing, another important uh, stuff which might be useful uh, is sometimes you will get something called opt, then you might have a home then you might be having something called where so if you ask me all these things are basically optional if, even if you don't have it that is fine but the most important thing which you need to have is the bin s bin lib etc dev and if you have if you have a content which has all these all these components and that particular directory or i can say the partition which contains that particular directory structure when you mount it on the slash that becomes your root file system now the question comes is who mounts it on the slash when the kernel boots up this particular content will be mounted over the root file system so in a simple terminology if i would like to summarize root file system is nothing but the contents which are required the basic minimal content which are required for the user to work on it and it is the partition which is being mounted on slash that's where with respect to slash you see etc bin s bin and all those kind of thing and kernel during the boot up will mount the root uh, will mount this partition as a root file system so that's it about the root file system. I hope I was able to clearly explain you about this term, what the root file system is. And put, uh, put your thoughts in the comment box. And if you have any queries, uh, you can ask me in the comment box. And also let me know like what all further topics you would like me to cover about which you are puzzled so that I can help you out with that as well. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Stay in touch.